everyone. Good morning. This is meteorologist Melanie Layden here and today's weather lesson for kids is about hurricanes. So I hope you can tune in today. This is an interactive lesson that we're doing now that a lot of kids I know are out of school right now, but you still probably want to be learning and having your kids kind of learn about the weather, finding fun things to do. So we're here to help you out here at News 4. Um, by talking about the weather today. So our lesson today is on hurricanes, and we're gonna talk about how hurricanes form, uh, how we classify them, the characteristics of them, and obviously here in the state, we don't really see much about hurricanes, so I thought it would be fun to talk about them since we see them on the news. You probably don't get to learn a whole lot about them outside of school in your science lessons. So we're gonna talk about them today. So if you have any questions for your kids that they're watching and have any questions about hurricanes, feel free to post them in the comments section and I'll try to answer as many as I can. So we'll go ahead and get started now that some people have tuned in. Again, if you're just joining, I'm meteorologist Melanie Layden and we've been doing a weather school for kids this past week. And so we're gonna continue it uh, until all of this coronavirus craziness is over with. So I'm gonna flip the camera real quick and show you a couple of pictures of hurricanes. This is what we're talking about today. And we're gonna talk about how they form. So hurricanes typically form from a disturbance in the atmosphere. It's usually over warm tropical ocean water and they really need that warm water to fuel them. That's why they're so uh, common in the summer months. We see them a lot in, usually around the time you go to vacation or on the beach and a lot of people, uh, get their vacations kind of ruined by hurricanes. This link's not working for me, so I'm gonna pull up a couple more pictures for you. Um, but, you know, hurricanes are actually very common in areas like Florida, along the East Coast. Um, you know, we don't really get to deal with a lot of them here in the mid-state, of course, but sometimes we usually feel the effects from them. We, we can get a lot of rainfall from hurricanes, and so that's why it's important for meteorologists to stay on track of them and know what path they're going to be taking to see if we're going to be getting any heavy rainfall from that. So uh, here's a picture of a typical hurricane from a satellite view and you can see they're uh, pretty monstrous looking sometimes, you know. Um, they form again, I mentioned over warm ocean water, that's what they need. So you see them growing a lot out in the ocean and how we classify them is actually by their wind speed. It's called a Saffir Simpson hurricane scale and that's what we use to measure how strong a hurricane is. Much like tornadoes, they're classified in categories uh, one through five, but we also, as they die down, uh, categorize them as what we call a tropical storm or a tropical depression. So you may have heard that before um, and wonder what the difference is. A tropical storm and a tropical depression aren't quite hurricanes yet. Um, it has to get over 75 miles per hour to be classified as a hurricane, a category one. And if wind speeds actually die down to be less than 40 miles per hour, that's when it's called a tropical depression. So, you know, one of the worst ones we've seen in history uh, has been not that long ago, 2005, Hurricane Katrina. And, you know, we see typically they, they do a lot of damage. Their wind gusts and storm surge is really the most dangerous part of them. So one big difference between a hurricane and a tornado is you get a lot more warning time when a hurricane moves in. With a tornado, it's pretty quick. So when a hurricane, when you know it's coming, we get a mandatory evacuation usually if it's heading right for your area. So we've seen that plenty of times over the years, especially in Florida, um, even areas along the Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana coast, they, they feel the effects of this too. All the way up through South Carolina, North Carolina, and then you may remember not too long ago, we had Hurricane Sandy, which affected as far north as the New Jersey area. So hurricanes do a lot of damage and they're really important for us to stay on top of here in Tennessee so we can see what they're going to be doing as far as the remnants of it as they die down and turn into a tropical depression uh, to see if we're going to get any rainfall from these in Tennessee. So in the summertime, that's when we turn our attention to hurricanes. And they're really fascinating. When I was getting my meteorology degree, it was one of my favorite things to learn about, but I actually did my studies more in the tornado category because I knew I wanted to live in the South and here in Tennessee, we get a lot of tornadoes. So I did my focus more on tornadoes, but I was always so fascinated by hurricanes. Um, so 
hurricanes um, are called, were called hurricanes here in America, but actually if you go past the equator in the southern hemisphere, you probably have heard these called tropical cyclones. Uh, maybe you've heard them called typhoons. They're all the same thing, but the only difference is of the way they rotate. Uh, hurricanes here in the northern hemisphere where we live, they rotate counterclockwise. And down in the southern hemisphere, they rotate clockwise. So that's kind of an interesting little fact about hurricanes there and the way that they move. Um, what you see here in, in this picture, for example, right there in the middle, that's the eye of the storm. And what's really interesting about the eye of a hurricane is that is actually where the calmest part of the storm is. You would typically think that that'd be the most dangerous part right there in the center, but that's actually where you see clear skies. Uh, that's the center of rotation. That's where the calm weather is. So we actually have storm spotters who will fly into the center of a hurricane to, to measure data and, and get data from these hurricanes. So very fascinating, very dangerous job, but that's actually where all the calmness of the storm actually is located. Um, surrounding that calm eye of the storm are the more intense winds and the thick clouds of the eye wall, which you see right there. That's actually where the heaviest wind, the, the gustiest wind speed is. And what I mentioned to you earlier is that um, Sapphire Simpson hurricane scale, we measure these in a category one and two, and then anytime you get a category three, four, or five, that's considered a major hurricane. And um, meteorologists actually measure wind speeds in knots, <laughs> which is kind of funny. We don't really use that a lot in our day-to-day -day language, but um, how we measure these by miles per hour um, and sustained winds. So if you have a sustained wind anywhere from 74 to 95 miles per hour, that's considered a category one. When you get into that, that major category, which is a category three hurricane, that is when uh, you get into over 111 miles per hour. So they kind of block these off in increments of 5 and 10. So once you get to 110 miles per hour, that's still considered a Category 2, which is not a major hurricane, but extremely dangerous winds can cause a lot of extensive damage with those kind of winds, you know, just like a tornado can. Um, even well-constructed homes could sustain a lot of siding damage, roof damage, uh, rooted trees could be snapped or uprooted from roads uh, that can block roads and that's, you know, that causes a lot of damage, power lines down, power loss to a lot of homes. Um, and also when you get to a category three, which is considered major, um, that's when electricity could be out for several days to weeks after a storm. And then when you get into a category four or five hurricane, and a category five is when you have wind speeds that are greater than 157 miles per hour. So that's very fast. And you can think of a, how fast a car goes, 157 miles per hour is extremely fast. And that's when you get the catastrophic damage that occurs. So um, lots of homes destroyed, flooding becomes a major issue, uh, storm surge, which is uh, very, uh, very dangerous. That's probably, I think, one of the most dangerous effects of a hurricane would be your storm surge. And that's what causes a lot of flooding, um, waves that are taller than you and me, you know, it just causes tons of damage. And that's what they saw a lot of during Hurricane Katrina back in 2005. So that's how we categorize hurricanes. So just like tornadoes, when you hear, maybe you've, you heard last uh, month about the tornadoes that came through Nashville, we categorize those as an EF3 tornado. We categorize hurricanes the same way based on their wind speeds. So a category three hurricane would be considered a major hurricane. Um, so, you know, not all of them are this strong. You know, this is a pretty big one you're looking at right here. And here's a look at what kind of damage uh, can come from these. You know, we see that's that's a little bit example here of storm surge when the, the water comes up over barriers and over gates and into roads and homes. That's when things get bad. Winds get really heavy during that point. And uh, that's when evacuations will be that even this point evacuations occur before this, but uh, these can be very dangerous as you can imagine. Um, so I mentioned to you that as hurricanes form in warm water, that's how they grow. But when they get closer to land, they actually start to weaken. So hurricanes, as they approach landfall, they weaken because they don't have that warm water anymore to keep growing. The land actually 
makes them die down. And so you might hear, oh, a category five hurricane is churning out in the ocean. I think, I believe it was about two years ago, we had a hurricane Dorian and it was a category five right as it was approaching landfall for Florida. But as it, as it approached landfall, it weakened significantly. Uh, we had that die down to, I believe it was a category one or two as it made landfall. This is what it looks like on our radar. You can see there, we, this is what it looks like from a satellite. And then when you see these colors here, that's, that's the cloud cover that we look at. And this is a radar image. So that's how we kind of look at our, a hurricane on a radar to see what it's doing. And you know, obviously those red colors are the very intense, much like you would see rain on a radar. That's how we look at hurricanes too. So that's a really cool picture right there. Um, find some more pictures. This is a really neat picture from a satellite taken above earth. That's really cool. But um, as I mentioned, when they do approach landfall, they do weaken and they weaken down to a tropical storm which is less than 74 miles per hour. So once you get over that threshold of 74 miles per hour, that's when it becomes a hurricane. And they eventually die down to a tropical storm. And then the weakest is called a tropical depression. And that's usually when it makes its way all the way up landfall. And these storms can even go as far as Canada. You know, like we can, let's look at a US map really quick. Let me type this in just so you can see, just to put it into perspective for you. Um, Here's a map of the United States right here. Say a hurricane is coming for Florida and it makes its way all the way up Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. These things can go for miles up into Canada before they actually weaken completely out of a tropical depression. So uh, this is, they can travel for miles and miles. And then, you know, you also see the Gulf Coast, the Gulf of Mexico, they get hit a lot with these too. So this is Louisiana. If you probably heard of Hurricane Katrina, that's where it hit, right there along Louisiana, Mississippi, even Alabama. A lot of people had a lot of hurricane damage there. Uh, a lot of storm surge happened there. And this is probably one of the last pretty, very intense hurricanes that we had at category five strength as it made landfall. And then a couple years later, we had Hurricane Sandy, which hit right over here and really affected that, that northern region there, especially the New Jersey area. So getting close to the New England region, um, Hurricane Sandy was a very big one too in the most recent years. And so if you have uh, maybe friends or family that live in the Florida area, they know all about hurricanes. They know how these form. They know that they can be pretty intense and they can be dangerous and they also issue mandatory evacuation. So that's why in the summertime months, we look out for hurricanes and we gotta watch what hurricanes are doing down in the Gulf Coast to see if they're gonna affect our weather here in the Tennessee area. So even though we don't deal with hurricanes, we as meteorologists still have to stay on top of them to see if we get any effects from those. So that's a little lesson about hurricanes. Hope you learned something new from them. I'm gonna go ahead and post this video to our WSMV Facebook page and you can watch these back um, even when they're not live and ask your questions. And I'll try to check back and see if I can answer some of those for you. Um, but if you have any questions, leave those there and we'd love to answer those for you. Hope you have a great day and thanks for tuning in to our Weather School for Kids.